Hey fellow Freaksters, it's Tim from the Moratorium. Just here to remind you that if you enjoy what you hear, please like, share, and subscribe, then rinse and repeat. We're just a couple of small town nerds trying to make sweet geek love to your ear holes, and we could use your support. Check out our website for movie reviews, links to social media, merch, movies, and more. You can find us at themoratorium.com. Now that that's out of the way, on with the shenanigans. Welcome to the Moratorium. I'm your host, Tim Kornman. Each week I will be joined by some esteemed, and I use that term loosely, movie watchers, and breaking down some of the weirdest and strangest films to ever, not necessarily, grace the big screen. These are the deep dive oddities and backroom bootlegs that appeal only to the diehard film fans. So sit back and enjoy the ride into the dark vault of the movie moratorium. All right, well, welcome to the moratorium. Uh, I'm your host, uh, Tim Kornman. And uh, Jason is out today because you know, he had something important to do, like you know, his anniversary. So, you know, he's out of town. He thinks that's more important than podcasting, who would think? So I'm bringing to you a special edition of the moratorium with our first ever straight up interview with a man who has probably seen more movies than many of us combined and most likely a few thousand that we've never even freaking heard of. He is the host of uh, B movie madness, an extremely popular Facebook group and YouTube channel. Give it up everybody for Jonathan Knight. Yeah, that's your cue. Hey there, everybody. <laughs> yeah. You've been very popular with uh B movie madness. Tell me about B movie madness. Well, um, B Movie Madness was um, a group I started back in 2013. It was a fairly small group. I think we only had maybe 100 members for quite a few years. And then, like, around 2018, it just exploded. Like, you know, overnight, there would be getting requests over and over and over and over again. To the point where I had to um, actually add a few people at the moderators and all that because I just couldn't control all of it. Since then, it's, it's, I think we're at 5.3 thousand members right now. That's incredible. Um, I can't believe it myself. And like, it just, it's grown so much. Um, but, you know, it's been a lot of fun. You know, I've gained quite a few friends down there, talked a, a lot of, about movies down there with people. And it's, you know, it's great. I'm really, I'm really happy that it's finally kind of, you know, become bigger which is what I wanted from the very beginning. So I'm glad. So why do you think uh, there's such a jump in popularity now? You know, I, I thought about that and I can't quite figure it out because it was just um, sudden. Um, I don't know if it's people saw the YouTube channel um, and Facebook. I don't know. I think what happened maybe is I started linking other groups that I'm in on Facebook. I linked them to my group. And I think people started jumping over because I'm, I'm probably a member of, I guess, God knows how many. Um, every day somebody sends me a request. But there's quite a few, like, you know, VHS collections that I'm part of. And I think a lot of those people jumped over the B Movie Madness. And, and then, then the people who stick around the group and are the people who post the most frequently. They're the ones that um, recommend it to other people. Yeah, I think when I, I joined, uh, B movie madness probably just right around when we started this podcast and this year and it was it was under like 2000 members and like in a series of just months you just almost tripled your membership it's just incredible it's awesome i love what you do and i see you post like three or four pics a day on on facebook are, are you watching that many movies a day um, yes, yes, I am. Every single picture I post of uh, a movie is uh, currently at that time watching it when I'm posting the picture. I have a lot of free time, so, <laughs> you know. I guess. So it's like, you know, 
it's, it's sometimes hard to pick a movie to watch because I'm thinking like, you know, if I pick a certain movie, there's, I might get a lot of shit for it. Like yesterday when I did Zoolander, I was like, people are going to be like, oh, that movie sucks. That's a shitty movie. But that ended up being widely, that picture wasn't been widely popular. Uh, do you think it was the wig? <laughs> yeah, I think it was. I'm sitting there, I'm looking at like the um, laughing um, emojis. And I, I think I'm currently at 100, which is probably the most I've ever gotten for a picture. Awesome. And let me just say, uh, I, I got to ask you, man, Jonathan Knight, is, is that your real name for one? Yes. Because that's a badass name. I mean, I'm sitting here with Tim Cornman, you know, it's like, it's granted, you're not going to find one or two Tim Cornmans in the world, but still like Jonathan Knight, I, I, it's like, uh, you're an offspring of Michael Knight. And I was thinking, you know, it'd be really, I, did they try to reboot Knight Rider? I, I wasn't sure, but man, if they did, I mean, I think you'd be a perfect person to be in there you can you know download different voice for kit you know and, and make some sexy foreign lady uh like uh maybe an ursula andrus you know but i guess our luck would you you'd come off like jaja gabor that'd be yeah. freaking hilarious but <laughs> who got you into movies um my mother did really um when i was around um five years old um she sat me in front of a tv and um, Tales from the Crypt came on. Awesome. And and it was the very beginning. You'd seen the lightning and all that, and that goes up into the house. I was just fascinated. You know, I wasn't scared of it. I was just fascinated. And after that, she started um, showing me, like, Puppet Master, Friday the 13th, Nightmare on the Street. That's freaking and awesome. She was okay with me watching them as long as I didn't, as long as I knew it was fiction. Right. And not to repeat anything it was in the movie. Yeah. You know, <laughs> <laughs> don't let anybody know you're watching this. Right? No, it, I, I kind of had the same thing. Uh, my mom and dad divorced when I was real young and my dad, not knowing how to be a dad, all he did was take us to movies, you know, and I'm, I'm 48 now. So I'm talking, you know, early eighties, we were going to the theater to see such things. I saw like, a, um, the entity at the theater, a movie that, you know, a 10 year old should not have been seeing at the theater. Oh, God. He didn't have any problem with, uh, with nudity and violence. And we just watched just about everything. But, uh, it, but granted, you know, I have two sisters. So I also watch like, you know, best little whorehouse in Texas and shit like that, you know? Wow. So that's awesome that you're, you're, I wouldn't think, you know, a mother would, uh, would be subjecting, you know, a young child to, to, to this. Uh, this is, that's great. Uh, was your father in the picture at all? Um, my father ended up leaving us when I was around five and gotcha. he was anti-horror movie. I had good reason to kick him out. To this day, he's anti-horror movie. And what's funny is, um, when I was around probably five, um, we had a TV in the kitchen and a TV in the living room. My mom was watching Friday the 13th part five in the kitchen. He came home and yelled at her and said, you know, get out of the kitchen, go in the living room. I went into the living room and my sisters and brother were watching dream warriors. <laughs> and it was the nurse scene. Awesome. <laughs> so I was like, all right, I just went from a good movie to an even better one. <laughs> But the funny thing about my mom is she didn't like me watching nudity in movies. In fact, um, her one of her least favorite movies, uh, and one of my favorite movies, really, the reason I got into B movies is The Toxic Avenger. Really? Because there's, you know, there's horror and horror movies and kind of a schlocky horror movies, but the true indie films, low budget, but no budget films. And I see a ton of shit here that I can't wait to get my grubby little paws on. So what kind of pushed you over to the edge to that? Was that Toxic Avenger that, that just led you to, uh, was it trauma? Well, it all started really with the Toxic Crusaders because when I was a kid, that show, you know, there was merchandise everywhere for it. Mm -hmm. And my mom had that, got me the action figures. I had Toxie and I had the bad guys and whoever. I moved to Florida in the early 90s and I was in a grocery store that actually had a video store inside of it. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I saw the cover art for the Toxic Avenger, and my first thing was like, oh, my God, they made a movie of this, thinking it was a kid's movie. Gotcha. <laughs> and I went home, put it in. My mom was in the kitchen, and I got to the first sex scene, <laughs> and she darted across the room, pulled that tape out of the machine, <laughs> and... And I, I got, she let me finish it, but she had the, her finger over the fast forward button. <laughs> That's awesome. And anybody who's seen the Toxic Avenger knows there's quite a bit of movie. <laughs> yeah, in the see, movie. But, so you saw about 40 minutes of the movie? <laughs> but, you know, it was so it's such a great movie for me at that age because I love superheroes. Mm-hmm. You know, I love monsters. I love gore. So, and that movie had everything in it. Oh, yeah. And I was like, you know, fascinated. And after I saw Talk to the Avenger, I saw Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. Okay, yeah. Which is another movie my mom hated for the past <laughs> one. And which was a cartoon at the same time as Talk to Crusaders, which is funny how it all was around. But I love Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. I was like, you know, this, you know, you can make a movie about anything. Mm-hmm. You can make anything a killer. Like, like Jack Frost, when I remember when that came out. I was like, oh my God, you can make a killer snowman movie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a killer ice cream man movie has everything. But it was all Toxic Avenger and Killer Tomatoes that kind of pushed me over that, you know, to that side and made me go to the video store and kind of, I discovered who Troma was. And I was like, okay, you have anything by Troma. The only thing they had besides Toxie was um, Redneck Zombies, mm-hmm. which I was like, you know, redneck zombies i don't care it's zombies and i'll watch it yeah <laughs> and that's when i discovered shot on video you know even then i was kind of like this doesn't really look like a movie but it is a movie but i went with it anyway i was like ah screw it it's a zombie movie i'll watch it so did you have a, a group of friends that you uh hung out with at an early age to get together and just watch these films and say and just subject each other to different shit I had um, a group of friends, you know, when I was in middle school who their parents didn't let them watch nudity and movies and all that. So every year I had a birthday party at night, we would lock, we shut the door and we'd watch Toxic Avenger because, and then when they watched it, they were like, oh my God, this is a real movie. And, and their parents were like, you know, I don't want my sons watching this. And I'm like, hey, I can't help it. They're going to watch it you know, some way or another. So. I remember I got in contact with somebody who worked at Troma when I was in middle school. Awesome. And they sent me a work print for Citizen Toxie. Awesome. And they were like, oh, you're, this guy was probably 25, and he, I was a annoying little kid, a young teenager. He was like, hey, yeah, I'll send it to you. And it was pretty much finished. They didn't have end credits, but it was finished. And I remember, you know, it was when that came in the mail, I called all my friends and they came over and watched it. And I think it was a good two, three years later that it finally came out in DVD. Oh, wow. Um, That's because the yeah, Atoma cool. movies usually take, it seems like a decade for them to be released. We had a watch party for that and other movies, but that was like probably the biggest event in the year 2000 for me. Well, that's sweet. The reason why we created like the moratorium is because of our love for, for just oddball movies and cult status type movies. And I mean, granted, your, yours are going way beyond what we do. Growing up, um, besides going into the movie theater, like on a weekly basis, even when I was just uh, a young kid, I grew up in a small town. We had two movie theaters. One was a one screen little theater. And then there was a drive-in theater, but I never got a chance to go to the drive-in theater because I was too young to drive at the point, you know, and I didn't have any older friends or I didn't want to hang out with my sisters either. So, you know, I just go to the one theater and just watch whatever they had on. I mean, this is the mid eighties. So just the twilight of romantic comedies and, and slasher horror films. It was, a, it was a great time for film. When I uh, when I got older, actually, I got a job at the drive-in theater right out of high school, and I worked there for a couple of years and had a great fucking time learning how to run the projection booth and the concession stand. It was just a whole freaking experience, you know, that I just loved. Now, granted, now these are all you know mainstream movies that we were playing, 
but it still I still had this need for B horror films. I've always just been attracted to B horror films. After I left the drive-in theater, I actually ran a multiplex, an eight-screen theater, uh, just close to where I live now, out, out outside of Tulsa, and became assistant manager there and just was all things movies. Straight after that, I worked at a video store for like seven years, you know, it was everything just movie related. I couldn't get enough. You know, I was the, I also worked at a, a liquor store at the same time I worked at a video store. I, I was been told I was the best roommate ever because I was never home and there was always movies. There's always liquor. So <laughs> <laughs> we started a, a section at the video store that was called the moratorium. And this was all the stuff that just wasn't available anymore. You could not find this shit, you know, unless you went to, you know, cons and, and picked up bootleg videos, you know, and just horrible trash VHS that it was at least you could see the film, which I love to do that. Is that something you also do is you, do you go to cons? Where do you get your videos? I usually um, Facebook. I trade with people. And that's where I usually get some of the rare stuff. You know, I'll contact people, stuff that you can't get on DVD whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of um, shot on video stuff still to this day does not have any release. Hell, the VHS and some of them are like hundreds of dollars. Oh, yeah. Um, and so I just get somebody rips them on DVD or and I watch them that way. Quite a few of them that, you know, one of these days I'd like to actually review or hopefully, you know, review one day. But no, I'd like to go to uh, some cons in the future. We have a, a horror movie store in Tampa here called Grindhouse Video. Awesome. And they're just amazing. Um, that's probably the closest thing we do have anything cool on this area. Yeah, we we don't have a lot here in Tulsa that would deal in such like that. I love going to like, you know, pawn shops and, and thrift stores. And, you know, if I find a tattered vhs copy of a film it's just it's just that's like gold to me you know <laughs> it's something that's just been through many many hands and that's what i remember going to the video store and just spending an hour just at the horror section just picking through and reading every box saying you know what what do i want i can't choose i want all of them i was like that as well in fact i don't think i ever went to any other section in the video store. Yeah. <laughs> for me, there was only the horror section. Everything else was not for me. But yeah, I understand. When I got a little bit older, I did, you know, explore the action movies and all that. But like when I was a kid, it was, you know, horror, horror, horror. Mm -hmm. All I cared about. Ditto. I even have a big tattoo on my arm that just has a Lecter's mask, Candyman's hook, you know, Kruger's glove and Jason's mask. You know, it's just kind of fun you know it's a blood splatter behind it because it's just everything that uh that has influenced me growing up so yeah so what's your uh favorite romantic comedy oh um <laughs> straight up um 16 candles there you go <laughs> I, I really do legitimately like that movie I, I love that movie some people are surprised by it but you know i really do like well john hughes in general i really oh, yeah. like but um i really like 16 candles what what is your video collection like? Do you have a wall that's just plastered with videos? You have your own store. <laughs> I, I wish I, I do have a section over um, in my corner of my room, but it's pretty much a tornado right now of VHS tapes and DVDs. My video tapes are mainly in the closet, um, but all my DVDs and Blu-rays are in my closet are on my shelf. I usually keep the stuff I tend to rewatch the most on the wall, and then um. I have a section way above my TV of my trauma movies and um, the stuff I really don't want if my nieces and nephews come over. Just out of reach. <laughs> like Necromantic and Cannibal Holocaust. I keep that stuff far above so they don't accidentally watch any of it. Yeah, I remember when we got Necromantic at the video store and everybody was looking at it. I'm like, I, yeah, I don't know if you want to watch this. You won't come back here to rent if I let you take this video home. <laughs> For sure. You know, that was the one that I remember back in the day where, you know, Fangory had those catalogs in the back that you could order. Oh, yeah. Those movies and Campbell Holocaust, 
were like probably the biggest bootlegs in those catalogs. Like I remember just being fascinated by um, Campbell Holocaust, not knowing much about it except for the title. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, Until I actually saw it probably 15 years ago, I saw it for the first time. Has there ever been a movie that you ever have turned off and deemed just unwatchable? I mean, besides like uh, anything with Olympia Dukakis in it. <laughs> um, um, unwatchable. Um, I'm sure I'm th- trying to think. Um, I know there's there's a few of them that enter in my I'm trying to remember right now uh, that pissed me off. Um, I mean, where do you draw the line? That like uh, killing children or hurting animals? Hurting animals. Um, I don't like that at all. And it's funny me saying that because I love Cannibal Holocaust. Mm-hmm. But um, although with that movie, I watched the animal cruelty free version because I just can't handle it. Um, hurting children. Um, the one was well, the one movie that kind of like almost broke me it was um, a Serbian film. Ah. Uh. I still have yet to watch it because I've been told the same thing. And that movie kind of like, you know, it's like, yeah, well, I'm not that really into this. <laughs> mm-hmm. But yeah, animal, like, um, when you call it slaughterhouse footage, you see a movie. There was one, I'm trying to think of a Yuva Bowl movie that he did, um, Seed, where it opens with the killer watching real, um, videos of, um, animals being killed. Hmm. That I couldn't get, I couldn't do that. Yeah, that just necromantic had a real rabbit being killed, and I couldn't do that either. But mostly, yes, yeah, the animal stuff. That's pretty much the one thing that I don't do. You have a puppy with you, right? Is that uh, Duke? Is that his name? Yeah, he's sitting right next to me. Yeah. <laughs> and you let him pick out some of your films, yeah. Yeah, he has some questionable movies. <laughs> Does he usually watch the films with you? Yeah, he's always sitting next to me watching us. Awesome. So tell me a little bit uh, more about yourself. I mean, I uh, couldn't count how many videos you have on on YouTube for B-Movie Madness for doing your reviews. What what are you, When you're going to do a review, are you just picking movies at random to watch and decide that this is what you're going to review? Or are you picking one out of the several that you've watched during the day and we're like, all right, this is what we're going to do today? Well, recently, the past year or more, all the reviews I've done were pretty much uh, screeners that were sent to me. Awesome. Um, help, I'm trying to help out a company called SOBHorror.com that all they do is release shot and video stuff. Yes. And I've been doing that. But before that, it was pretty much like, you know, when am I going to review? You know, I kind of figure it out. And somebody would be like, recommend the title. Okay, I'll review that. Um, it's funny, the one movie I have not reviewed, and people, are, I'm surprised by it as well, is I have not reviewed The Toxic Avenger at all. Because huh. um, I'm afraid that I'll probably go on for three hours. <laughs> because it's one of those movies I can talk about over and over again. But like, you know, for the most part, you know, randomly picking out something from the pile. There's only two reviews that I've done that were negative, and um, YouTube took one of them down. Really? Actually. It was actually not YouTube. It was um, WWE did not care for my um, review of Leprechaun Origins. Huh. And that was the one time I actually was really, really, really harsh on a movie because I just absolutely hated that movie. And they were upset that I used footage from the trailer in it. just like a little bit of footage, not much. Mm-hmm. And I fought it and fought it, and, and they ended up taking it down. But they, you know, they weren't too happy with me. But most of the time, yeah, I just pick out whatever that you know i'll watch something and be like hey i can talk about that movie um and, and i think i've reviewed some comics too which is really really strange because i wasn't really quite sure how to <laughs> review a comic book but i've done that as well recently it's been mainly um screeners sent to me by various people i had recently um and i haven't watched it yet but a movie called Sexploitation, the movie okay. that was sent to me by the filmmaker, Bill Zabub, Satan himself sent it to me. I haven't watched it yet. <laughs> he wouldn't let me know anything about the movie because he wants me to see it for myself. No. So I'm kind of <laughs> kind of scared. But. <laughs> but that's cool. How how did you how did you meet him? Uh, a group member 
uh, I'll give him a shout out, Clint MacArthur. He um, contacted Bill. He was like, hey, you should, you know, check out B Movie Madness and give Jonathan Knight message him and see about reviewing some of your movies. He messaged me and I said, absolutely. If you want me to you know, you know, review it, I will do it. And that's well, that's mainly how I get in contact with people. I'll get messages from various people be like, hey, can you review my movie? I'm like, absolutely. Um, there's only been one time I actually reached out to somebody. They were asking for people to review their um, movie. And I was like, I would have loved to review your movie. I'm a fan. Here's um, my YouTube channel. And the person completely ignored my message and blocked me. Ah. Well, let's not give them a shout out. I don't understand out. what I did. <laughs> but I was like, fuck it. And I moved on from it. That's something when I was working at the video store, man, when we would get the screeners in and a lot of times they were just crap that we wouldn't even get a chance to order, but we would at least get to keep the screeners. So I always had a stack of, of films that nobody ever had a chance to watch. And, and that was a lot of fun. Uh, I can't pick any out of my head cause that was like 20 years ago. So sorry, I'm old. But but that's that was like my favorite thing to see the UPS man bring in this box. It's like, oh, it's just Christmas time. What do we got coming in here? We never knew. But back then, too, you know, I mean, we have IMDb now that we constantly were just trolling through and finding out interesting information about different actors and and different films. But back then we had what we called the video Bible. And this thing was just absolutely huge. And weekly, we would get updates. They'd send us, you know, pages to replace sections in this video Bible. You know, it was just like a, a encyclopedia of just films. You can search by actor, and then you just have to flip through all these pages. And a lot of fun. But now it's just way too easy with, like, IMDb and shit to find things. Yeah, people don't understand the struggle. <laughs> that, that was kind of like the fun of it, though, like, you just had the cover art, which most of the time the cover art was amazing mm -hmm. for like everything. And you would be like, Oh my God. Like I still remember the uh, cover art for spookies. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I don't even give a shit what this movie's about. <laughs> I just wanted to have all that in it. <laughs> and it did. <laughs> so yeah, spookies was, that was 1986. Yeah. Yeah. You know, as a kid, that was like, it didn't matter if the movie was like two different productions or two movies stitched together mm -hmm. it was the monsters in it were awesome and that's all i cared about that's all i cared about like ghoulies i mean the monster popping out of the toilet on the cover i'm like i don't care i gotta see that movie i got a chance to meet charles band on two different occasions uh we went to a a con in oklahoma city that was actually he had this uh traveling show that was charles band's horror road show they uh, actually pick people out of the crowd to go up and he was like, let's just, we're going to make a scene from a B movie right now. But he had also had some girls that he had uh, uh, hired. Of course, you know, he's like, uh, you got to have a, you know, interesting setting. You got to have some nudity. You got to have some of this. And it was just, it was a, a fun little play, but man, my wife actually is a huge, huge puppet master fan here in my studio, I've just got, you know, just what I called the museum at one time because I've just got trinkets and toys and I've got autographed copies of like several different Japanese versions of Blade up here that are still in the package, you know, mint and box and just just fun stuff that I surround myself at all times. Yeah, Charles Band had had talked about ghoulies and that scene with a ghoulie coming out of the toilet, right? They, that wasn't actually in the film. He actually, somebody made that, that art and, uh, he liked that so much that they shot it afterwards and put it into the film. It was like the weekend that Ghoulies came out and there was all this mail showed up on his desk of all these letters and shit. And he was like, Oh my God, you know, what the, what have I done? You know, people were just outraged of, you know, how dare you, you know, my kid will is afraid to go to the toilet now just from seeing this monster come out of the toilet. And but he said because of that, he had a hit on his hand because his, uh, 
as we all know, you know, even negative publicity is publicity. I went to the first Texas Frightmare weekend and got to get George Romero's autograph on my Creep Show comic book. Uh, it was a Creep Show magazine comic book that I bought when I was 16 and have kept in a box ever since, you know. I stood in line for an hour. Of course, when he got this in, in his hand, he's like, oh, man. He's like, yeah, this is an oldie. And he started to open the cover. And I'm like, no, dude. <laughs> you know, I've saved this for 20 years, man. I have not opened that cover. Don't do it. <laughs> but tell me more about, uh, about B-Movie Madness, though. You're not putting a label on B movies. Now, what do you consider a B movie when you're talking about B movie madness? You know, like, you know, the trauma stuff, the, um, stuff like sorority babes and the slime ball, bull rama stuff like that. And the reason I don't put labels on certain stuff, because, you know, people get a little upset sometimes whenever a non B movie is, um, discussed in the group, which, you know, I don't want people like, having conversations nonstop about like the Godfather or something like that, but stuff like, you know, um, you know, like Friday 13th, some people don't consider the B movie because it was made by a studio or whatever, but I, would, I don't have any problem with that being discussed, but you know, as long as it's, you know, close enough to a B movie, like promoting a positive environment, not negative reviews, just like you said yeah. before. Yeah. That's the thing. I mean, that's the main reason I made the group. You know, I, w I was in so many horror groups before I made it, and I was really not having a good time in them. People in there were very, very negative. Um, if it wasn't considered a classic, it was just shit. Um, and I was like, man, I'm not really liking this. So that's when I decided to put my foot down and be like, you know, something, I'm not going to make my own group and discuss the things I want to discuss and i'm sure over time it will find an audience which you know it did it doesn't have to necessarily be an actual b movie but just the love for movies in general mm -hmm. there's so much negativity out there towards certain films too man it's just let's just appreciate it for what it is and i i, I dig yeah, that i mean that's the the main like you know on some youtube channel where they review these bad movies and they just give them so much shit. I'm not really into that. I mean, they can do whatever they want to their channel, but I was like, you know, if I'm going to do a YouTube channel about B movies, I'm going to try my best to be as positive as possible. And for the most part, except for that Leprechaun review, I pretty much have been positive. So that had to be pretty bad movie for you to actually shit on it then, huh? I, I didn't see it. <laughs> yeah. So feel free to trash it right yeah, now. <laughs> it, it was it it was one of those things where I knew I wasn't gonna like it. I don't know why I even watched it, and I was so frustrated by it that I actually did the review like right away. And then I was like, and then probably like two days later, it was taken down. Wow! Can't win them all. <laughs> That's right. So did, tell me more about this uh, about SOV horror. Who who's who's got that? Who's running this show over here? Um, SOVHorror.com um, is ran by a friend of mine, um, Tony Marcello, who, um, he's been tooting the SOV horn for a long time. And he started doing a documentary about SOV horror that ended up turning into a web series because it just became so massive that it was just unable to keep it in documentary form. Um, and then, you know, he would interview the filmmakers, the cast, the crew. He, then he started his own. DVD company uh, releasing stuff, SOV stuff that was either lost or barely released. Um, and there was the first movie he did, Metal Noir, was a movie that was filmed in like the early 90s and never saw it release. And he, he had to actually Frankenstein a copy together from two different s sources to oh, release wow. it because he had a really cruddy looking fourth generation tape, I believe it was that was just really cruddy. And then he had a work print that was missing footage. So he had to take from the fourth generation tape and fill in the blanks. And he's been doing it for a while now. He's actually made his own, his own movies. I'm, I'm actually 
appearing in one of them that's coming out in October. Yeah, Drop it. What's the name? Or can you? It's called Nat- Natasha Knighty's Boudoir of Blood. And it's done in the style of uh, like USA Up All Night. Awesome. Um, so there's like ads, like commercial breaks, but they're like fake commercials, like date, like those 900 dating um, oh. ads and all that. And I'm, I'm peering in one of those ads. <laughs> It was one of those things where he he needed one more text of me. He's like, can you please do one? And I only need 30 seconds. You can just, the whole purpose of it is you say things in the dating ads that would churn off most people. And I said, I got, I got this shit right here. Don't worry about it. I got it. And I shot it um, a couple of times. I ended up putting Duke in it because the last part of it wasn't working well. So I just grabbed him. And it should be out in October. Um, it's actually a sequel to uh, an anthology film he did last year. And that's a we have anthology called Zombarella's House of Horror. Yes, I'm actually looking at that right now. A sequel of sorts. It has a different host and all that. But um, the Natasha Knight should be out in October. I believe he's actually putting the finishing touches on it now. So have you ever starred in any uh, SOV films? I shot an SOV when I was 17 during summer break in school called The Retarded Dead. Awesome. I ended up shooting that with a couple of friends. There was a message board about zombie stuff and this filmmaker was looking to do an anthology or a collection of zombie short films and it could be anything you wanted to be as long as it was zombies. The rules were it had to be shot in 24 hours. Oh man, yeah. Automatically I was like Retarded Dead. Have to be retarded zombies. <laughs> I'm not particularly proud of it. It's you know when I watch it, I'm kind of like, yeah, yeah. If I did it today, it would be so much. <laughs> not, I don't. It would be more entertaining. I wouldn't say better, but it'd be more entertaining. But that's pretty much the only shot and video thing I've ever you know started in. That's pretty cool though. Oh, yeah, I was working at Kmart at the time, and some guy came in and just invited me out to uh the set which i didn't realize uh, at the time was it was actually a student film it was set we had this mental institution that was outside of tulsa here that was run down it was shut down like in the mid 80s and it was just abandoned and uh i I got to go out there and help them. They were using part of that as, as their set and, you know, help them, uh, shoot a few things. And man, it was, it was just, it was awesome. And I would love to just, you know, picked up a camera and, and, you know, gone to do rogue filmmaking. And I think that's probably really where SOV is. I mean, gets their roots. I mean, just rogue filmmaking. We're not getting, uh, permits to do anything you know, we're just grabbing our friends going out and just making something happen and having a good time with it that's what i see when i see these films and i i get interested in watching them because i'm like these guys are just having fun yeah that was what the wonderful thing about the 80s where where you could actually go out with your friends make a movie and it would be in the video store for everyone to see and that's just what was the wonderful time you know, that was the 80s. You could just, you know, make whatever. You know, there was such a hunger for these movies that, you know, mm-hmm. they would get picked up and put out there. And sadly, of course, we don't really have that anymore. Right. But it was a great time. But at least we can still celebrate it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was just looking at, uh, oh, one of the SOVs that, that you did. Oh, it's where they were going to... Uh, the virgins were going to uh, have sex with the uh, zombie cocked kid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna look quickly because it sounds really familiar. <laughs> zombie cocked kid. But yeah, you think you mentioned it was something like uh, "Stand by Me." Oh, the weird and necromantic mixed together. Yeah, the weird Z's. Yeah. Well- yeah, I had to look that up, and it's actually available on YouTube right now. And I kind of flipped through it real quick. And I'm like, I got to go back and watch. Yeah, this. The, the director put that on um, there for free. I mean, for the longest time, it was a movie that you would have to actually go talk to him personally on Facebook to get a copy of it. And he finally was like, I'm going to put it on YouTube so people can enjoy it. 
That's awesome. It's cool to be able to get things on demand like that, but man, I miss going to the video store and just reading the back of the boxes, you know? I had nothing else to go by. I didn't have a phone that I could look up a movie, look at reviews, check and see if it's on Amazon. Like, no, we just read the boxes and thought this sounded cool. Let's go home, pop some popcorn, plop down in front of the TV, cross-legged, and just have a great time. I miss those days. Yeah, me too. So you said you have a couple of siblings. Are they into movies and anything like you are? Not nearly as much as me, but they do enjoy horror movies, both of them, both of my sisters. Oh, yeah, two sisters? Yeah. Yeah, same here. That's You know, we didn't have shit growing up. We didn't have money for anything, and I always joke, and I have two older sisters, and, you know, uh, hand-me-downs sucked. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when I was a kid that we couldn't even afford a VCR, so we'd have to rent one. The video store. Oh, yeah. Oh, definitely, man. We could rent a VCR for five bucks and rent a few movies for two dollars a piece. And we had a, a laser disc at one time, you know, the ones that you had to flip over in the middle of the movie. Mm -hmm. I th that was the day, man. That was big time there. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think I, yeah, I, got my first laser disc player two years ago awesome because my brother-in-law gave it to me and i got like dr giggles um a bunch of action movies sweet on my laser disc and i was like i didn't know you had to flip it <laughs> <laughs> i was like you know like wow but you know i haven't played with it much but i'm glad i own it we absolutely love it. i love the fact that you could fast forward and there were no like tracking lines and shit so you can see exactly where you wanted to go yeah no man growing up i my dad he had he had a little bit of money so they had you know they had stacks of movies that we'd always go through but it had the old top loader vcr and that was our weekends man we didn't know anything other than watching movies and going out to eat and that's just it he didn't know how to talk so that's why we, we watched movies so yeah you also have a link on SOV Horror for B Movie Madness. You can find all of your shit off of there. I also like the fact that you're, you, you do, uh, B Movie Madness has a music page. Yes. B Movie Madness Radio. I started that because, um, well, I really like music from B Movies and I was like, you know, there was some stuff that wasn't on YouTube that I wanted on YouTube. There was some stuff that was completely lost where I would have to actually rip it from the movie, and clean it up as good as I could, and put it on there. Like, like there's um, some music from, like, there's a, a really bad but hilarious 80s action movie called Animal Protector, which uh, has David Carradine in it. Okay. And it has a really cheesy but entertaining as all hell theme song that you can't find anywhere else except for B Movie Madness Radio that I ripped and cleaned because they play it in its entirety twice in the movie, opening credits and end credits. Okay. That's how good it is. They have to play it. Like that's the reason I started that. And then I started doing the playlist on there because uh, people wanted the playlist, but that channel actually is much bigger than my regular B movie managed channel. Yeah. It looked like you had, uh, 272 subscribers on B movie madness radio. Yeah. And shit. Um, I was like, that's, that's pretty cool. I think one of the songs from the Toxic Avenger has over maybe like 15,000 views. Wow. Yeah, I, I saw that the other day and I was like, because the song, it, it, it's the Body Talk song. That's on YouTube and quite a few channels. You know, it's been uploaded quite a few times. So I'm just amazed that of all the ones I posted, that's the largest one, yeah. That's freaking cool. How long have you had uh, B Movie Madness Radio? Mm -hmm. Let me see. Did you just start this last year? I think I got the date right here. Oh, 2019. I started it last June. That's what I thought. And you've had an amazing, like 57,000 views. That's freaking awesome. Well, I'm surprised that, you know, a lot of people enjoy it. And then I occasionally will get a request to, you know, upload something or some song. And for, for the most part, I try my best to put it on there. So can you find this type of thing? Yeah. Somebody wanted a song from the John Cusack movie, um, Better Off Dead. And I was like, 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll find it. And I found it and put it up on there. And Slumber Party Massacre 2 soundtrack, which I don't think has a, a release, really. I ended up putting that up on there recently. Yeah, I see that. Out of Control? Yep. A lot of fun shit on here, man. Yeah. I'm trying to, you know, I'm going to, you know, put some more probably. I'm trying to think of, you know, obscure music from movies that probably no one's ever heard of that is enjoyable, at least. I think you have the background to do that. No problem, man. I mean, you've probably seen thousands and thousands of movies. You've seen shit that nobody else has ever seen. If somebody's interested in B-movies, man, give them a taste what would give them hooked. What What do you think would what they should look for? Uh, the, the five movies that I would suggest would be Toxic Avenger, Swarty Babes and the Swine Ball Bowl Rama, maybe like The Dead Next Door, even though that's probably not, well, that's a big movie, but it's not super. Uh, Terror Vision, that's a really good one. Maximum Overdrive, stuff like that, you know, because you know, I try suggesting that kind of <laughs> stuff. Some people, I, I can't go super cheesy with it because then people will be like, you know, what the hell is this? And I'm yeah, like, you know, like if you like The Toxic Avenger and some Sorority Babes and like Hollywood Chainsaw Hook with the Babes, they're like, was a really like good title. And I said, Hollywood Chains of Hookers. Don't even ask me what it's about. That says everything. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's right there in the title, man. That's a good thing. That's a very great thing about B-movies. They always had these really amazing titles. And they would hook you right from the start. You know, and you, That's one thing about a movie. If you have a really good title, then you'll get people's attention. I'm looking at the uh, the Dead Next Door. Uh, is that 1989? I've I've never seen this. Yeah, um, yeah, Dead Next Door is actually pretty interesting. Um, Sam Raimi um, produced it. He used a fake name. He actually helped finance it. Okay. And the audio from the original shoot at the time when it came out was fucked up, so they brought um, Bruce Campbell in to dub some of the characters. I see that. The lead character sounds like Bruce Campbell, and you're looking at him like that. It's not Bruce Campbell, <laughs> but that's clearly. Bruce Campbell. Now, when they put the Blu-ray out, they were able to get the original audio finally cleaned up and sounding all right. So now you have the option to listen to the original production audio, but I can't listen to it. I got to listen to the Bruce Campbell mix because that's what I grew up with. That's awesome. But yeah, Dead Next Door, it's a it's really, you know, a really well done zombie movie. It was shot on Super 8 and it's like involving a Jim Jones-like cult who believed that zombies shouldn't be killed, you know? And all that it's it's it has like a uh, group of cops called the Zombie Squad that go out and kill zombies. It was one of those movies when you know I, I didn't the video store didn't have it, so I had to buy a VHS bootleg of it. Mm-hmm. And it was, it was pretty good. Well, I see here, like you said, uh, produced by Sam Raimi. It says executive producer as the master cylinder. <laughs> <laughs> yes, supposedly he used his um, Evil Dead Two money. To help produce it. All right. But the, the movie it came out in '89, but I think it was like took years to do. So it was one of those movies. I think it probably shot in like '86, '87, and then took forever to come out. Man, I remember seeing Evil Dead Two came out. They even had it at the local gas station. Being able to rent VHS tapes anywhere you went, the grocery store, the gas station, a hell of a lot of fun. It was. Army of Darkness, I got to see at the theater, and that was like one of the highlights of, you know, when I was young. Yeah, it was funny is I, the first Evil Dead movie I saw was Army of Darkness. I had no idea there was an Evil Dead 1 and 2. So I was, I was obsessed with Army of Darkness. I think I was in Walmart, and they re released the first two movies on VHS. Mm-hmm. And I was looking at a cover, and I'm like, I know that dude. I know him. And I looked, I'm like, oh my God, I've been watching a third movie in the series. Because <laughs> they fucking had to change the title. That's awesome. Like you, you think like you know it opens up with flashbacks to the first two movies, the second movie. Mm-hmm. And as a kid, I never like figured that out. I was just like, fuck it, that's part of the movie. <laughs> then I watched the first two movies, and I realized the ending of the second movie was different from the beginning of Army of Darkness. And I'm like, but the medieval people liked him at the end of part two, and now he's their prisoner. <laughs> I was 
fuck it. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty rad. But, you know, I was, yeah, when I saw Evil Dead 2, um, I got it on VHS for Christmas one year, and I thought it was, like, the greatest movie ever made. Freaking, freaking cool. You know, something I've been doing lately in the podcast is actually uh, going over, like, the video nasties. Have you ever gone through that list? Yeah, I um, watched the documentary to both, and they had, like, the trailers for every single one of them. And I would go over and watch them, the movies, over and over again just to, you know, see if they were any good. I'm digging the list, but there's some some movies I'm like, why is this on the list? Yes, yeah, Like uh, uh, Toby Hooper's uh, Fun House. Yeah, it don't make any sense. That movie's not that violent. I know. The only thing I can think of is when, like, uh, what Esmeralda's given giving him a hand job, but I'm like, it's not like you see anything. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, it's just, it's weird. But that's a movie that I watched growing up. I, it's just one of my absolute all time favorites. I loved it. I was obsessed with like with the carnival in general. I just found something fascinating about it. And the director of Texas Chainsaw Massacre did it. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to watch it no matter what. And I think uh, I actually read the book, too, and Dean Koontz wrote the book, but it was like a movie tie-in. I enjoyed that, too. It just kind of got a little background story into the characters, and I, I, I just really dig that, too. Yeah. But, I, you know, I've watched that movie, I don't know, a thousand times. I mean, like, we talked about your go-to, man, but do you, do you often go back and just re-watch these films and just relive the same movies over and over again. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, when there's something I can't, I can't figure out what to watch. It's like, you know, instead of standing there and looking at the shelf, like for what seems like hours, I'm like, you know, something It's going to pick something that I'm familiar with that I love. And now I have to overthink it. Yeah. Like I pick out the text chains on that because That's my favorite horror movie of all time. That one. But then like B movie wise, I pick out, for some reason, the recently, the movie The Brain. Okay. I've been watching over and over again because there's something about that movie I really like. It also had an incredible VHS cover art too. Oh yeah. That and a movie called Demon Wind, which I'm yes, Demon Wind has the yeah, Demon Wind. yeah has the hands kind of reaching forward, the windows strewn open. Yeah. Yeah. And the Blu-ray cover art had that 3D, whatever you want to call it, when you move it. Sweet. And I, I'm such a huge fan of it, I actually bought the T-shirt <laughs> from the same um, company, uh, Vinegar and Syndrome. I got the T-shirt right. I'm looking right at it right now. That's how much I really like Demon Wind. It was one of those movies because of the cover art, like you said, that I was just like, what is this? I can't wait to get my hands on it. <laughs> what, what is a Demon Wind? <laughs> Silent but Demon Wind. And every wind. time I mention to people, I'm like, Demon Wind, they're like, is it about fart? <laughs> <laughs> they just go right there. <laughs> I'm like, I wish. Sounds like a good movie, but no. And that's another thing, man. You have a different T-shirt for every freaking video you do, man. Do you just have the, the coolest collections of T-shirts? Most of the time I get from, like, Bright Rags, uh, the Kirk Keeper T-shirt mm -hmm. and the Toxic Avenger one I have are from them. And sometimes I just go on eBay. Like, I have a Face the Dead T-shirt which I just wanted it just because it's a good conversation starter. People see me. Um, I got that on eBay. I get God, Godzilla shirts I got on eBay. I think every year Fright Rags does a mystery t-shirt thing okay. on their website where they just send you a t-shirt in whatever size, and you don't know what it is until you open it. I dig that. I think last time I got a Goosebumps one. I was like, that works for me, you know? <laughs> Nothing wrong with that, man. I've got like three shirts that are appropriate to wear like to actual functions. You know? <laughs> Other than that, it's, okay. it's just all movie t-shirts. <laughs> yeah. So that's something I, I dig. Have you thought about making your own t-shirts, man? Because your logo's banging. I wanted to do a, not a new logo, but like a, a logo with some, uh, another picture. My idea was to, um, from the end of the, um, the ending of brain damage when his head is blown open uh -huh. and the lights coming out, I want to have it have me or just a random person of uh, their head blown open with the light coming out and out of the light, a whole bunch of characters from B movies are coming out of it. 
And there, there was so much madness in their head that it immediately blew out of it. I dig it. And I wanted to do that with the logo, but I need someone to know, know how to do the art. Oh, but it's fun. I dig this. Yeah. Have you ever thought about doing a podcast? Yeah. Um, a few years ago, there was somebody else on the group that like, hey, we should do a podcast. And I said, I didn't really have the equipment to do it um but you know i was like I, someone else is like if you're gonna do a podcast and you want me to you know be on there I'll, absolutely i'll do it but i don't have the equipment to start my own i would like to say it's cheap no this is an expensive hobby <laughs> yeah <laughs> but that's what i've heard from other people too there are a thousand podcasts out there if not more doing movie reviews but I don't think anybody's doing what you do. The closest thing I can think of is um, there's a podcast called Junk. Is it called Junk Food Dinner? Okay. And I'm Junk Food Dinner where they, they're each week or maybe once a week or once a month, I can't remember. They watch three movies, the movies that they've never seen. That's the closest thing I can think of what I would probably do. Is that kind of like a dare even, you know? Each person brings one movie to the table and says, all right, this is what I'm going to make you watch today. I, th I think so. I, I remember somebody made the other two watch Thanks Killing. <laughs> right. And they weren't very happy about it. <laughs> and then the next year, he made them do Thanks Killing 3. Awesome. And they were not happy <laughs> at all about it. And that's what made it entertaining, though. Well, I might have to check them out. They've been around quite a bit or for quite a while, but they're the, the only other one that I probably listen to besides yours is um, SOBs who love SOV. <laughs> <laughs> I take that name. It, it, it's ran by my administrator on the group, Rebecca Tony of uh, SOV Horrors on there. Each they do episode, they review a um, uh, SOV. It, it's pretty good. Yeah, I dig this. SOBs who love SOV. That's that's a great fucking name. Yeah. They did Redneck Zombies, Wood Chipper Massacre. Gotta love that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Hey, thanks for the heads up. Now I can add those to my list. <laughs> well, dude, man, it's been a great time talking to you, man. Uh, hey, feel free to, to plug anything you want to plug right now. E Movie Madness on Facebook, look us up. Um, YouTube, same thing. Um, and, and of course, B Movie Madness Radio, which is also on YouTube. Um, also, SOVHorror.com. If people love shot on video movies, um, he has, I think, up to close to 20 releases up um, so far. And people who love good old fashioned cheese, they've got pretty much everything on there from anthology movies to Halloween theme horror, you know, whatever you need. Did he produce most of those movies? He produced Zombarellas and the one I'm in. Okay. The other ones he's um, gotten the rights to from the filmmakers themselves and, you know, put out. Produce, he produced New Actress for it, cover art, and, you know, et cetera. You know, a lot of these were like movies that really never saw a release. And if they did, it was like probably like very, very small. Mm -hmm. No, nah, it's cool. Everybody go check those guys out because, uh, it's not like these people are making bank on this. We're doing it because we love it. Are you making any money on B-Movie Madness? Oh, no, not at all. You do it because you love it. You spend your time to put this stuff together and, and to bring to light these oddball, weird, obscure, cult, you name it. Bring it to light, man. Telling people about it. I dig it. I love it. And I, I, I wish you well. I hope everything thrives in the future. I, I appreciate it. Hey, I appreciate you coming on, man. Appreciate you having me on here. It's been great. And maybe sometime we can get you back when actually uh, cover a movie together. That could be a lot of fun, too. Yeah, that would be great. Everybody, please go check out B-Movie Madness. All right, Jonathan, I appreciate your time. You take care. I'll be talking with you soon. Okay. Catch you later. been 
listening to a special edition of the Moratorium. We would like to thank Jonathan Knight for allowing a glimpse into the madness. You can find B-Movie Madness on Facebook and YouTube. Check out our website for everything Moratorium, including movie links, movie reviews, merch, and more. Again, please like, share, and subscribe, then rinse and repeat. We appreciate your support. If you have any movie suggestions or just want to tell us how much we really suck, you can contact us at moviemoratorium at gmail.com. Thanks for listening, and long live VHS. Bill the Bum, Satan himself, sent it to me.